Perfect. Okay, so we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, thanks everybody for joining. Thanks Sid for, for joining us as well. This is a continuation of our uh, weekly training that we do every Thursday. And this week we are going to cover a few of our executive meetings and, and what Sid went through during those meetings. And the first one was, was Fidelity, which uh, was a little bit different because this one we could actually prepare for. It was kind of a, I'll call it a normal, normal customer or prospect sales meeting, which we could properly qualify and do all the, the advanced things that we normally do uh, in discovery to, to understand exactly what, what the prospect needs and what they're looking for. Whereas the second two, uh, Morgan Stanley and Volkswagen, uh, we did not have the ability to do that. This is uh, the example where they actually came to us and said, hey, would, would you GitLab come in and, and talk to our executives about what you're doing and uh, uh, kind of what the vision is for the future as well. So uh, as an example of that, let me share my screen real quick. Uh, and so this is, this is just notes from, from the Fidelity one, who's gonna be there, uh, a little bit about the agenda, uh, the roles for the meeting. So one thing I like to make sure uh, when we do this is everybody has a distinct role of what they're gonna present or information that they're gonna gather uh, to do that. And so this is actually on the invite if you wanna see the full thing, uh, feel free to look at it in your leisure. Uh, but again, from there, uh, what we're gonna do is have Larry kind of kick this off the same way that he kicked off Morgan Stanley and, uh, and go straight into the presentation. So from there, Larry, I'll let you kick it off. Larry, you're muted. Can you hear me now? Yep. All right. I just lost my, okay, let me put the, I'm going to share my screen and hopefully you guys can see what I'm looking at. We'll all be looking at the same uh, presentation. So at least, right, let's see here. I'm still getting used to some of this new technologies. Okay. Can everybody see my screen? Can everyone, everyone? Yep. Okay. Yes, okay. Cool. All right. So, uh, you know, as Mark uh, sort of headlined the discussion, we really, we really didn't have all the kind of information that we wanted, but we certainly knew that we really felt quite privileged by the fact that we were invited to participate in this annual CTO innovation event. And so we were, we were grateful. So what I'll do is I'll tee up that, that meeting I'll highlight the agenda, and then after that, I'll hand it over to, to Sid, if you will. So, let me let's see if I can get the next slide here. So here was the agenda, and every industry, each one of us knows that every industry uh, is undergoing a high degree of disruption from mobile devices, uh, as these devices are becoming, if you will, a a dominant conduit, if you will, of, of communication between organizations and their customers. Further, competition from non-traditional players is really altering the landscape. Now, for Morgan Stanley, uh, this is both an opportunity and a threat. And it's, a, it's an opportunity because those organizations that cannot adapt, who will clearly not be able to survive on their own, will need to pursue strategic alternatives such as a merger and acquisition, which is Morgan Stanley's business. So they're presented with a unique opportunity as an uh, in that area. As a threat, really it's not a threat, it's just another opportunity. What they've got to do is make sure that they continue to enhance their systems to, uh, to ensure customer engagement is, uh, is productive and they can identify new revenue sources. Now, there were eight tracks that uh, we were invited to Cloud, big data, digital transformation, security, and artificial intelligence and development tools. So the common denominator of all this was technology and certainly software. And this is where we play a very unique and pivotal role. Now, Sid's gonna talk about that in a lot more detail, but here's, the, here's what I'd like to leave you with. Um, and that is that in the 21st century, if, if you're staying the same, you're falling behind. So just think about that in the back of your mind. So, uh, I'm not going to, this, this is a really cute uh, video. I'm not going to show it here, but it, this presentation will be available for you guys to take a look at. But uh, 
Normally we go around the room and we conduct introductions. We understand everybody's roles, what they want to get out of the meeting, and why they're interested in participating in this meeting at all. And I'm not going to do that here because it's not practical. But essentially, we did the, we did, everyone went around the room, everyone did a background, who they were, and we sort of hey, left it with, uh, uh -oh. with Sid to explain yeah. the background. Yeah. Somebody needs to mute, uh, just real quickly. And then, of course, the voice of the customer wanted to understand, wanted to encourage a very collaborative environment. We really wanted to hear, since we didn't, we weren't able to do the kind of discovery that we really wanted to do, this was our opportunity in the voice of the customer phase for us to understand why they wanted to talk to us. What was the catalyst? What are the business problems that they're trying to address and to solve? And this was that opportunity. So at this point in time, this is sort of the overview. And uh, what I'm going to do is, uh, is hand it over to Sid. Sid, do you want to work from this, this PowerPoint? Or did you have something else that you wanted to, to work with? No, Larry. Um I think uh, um, what was really great with that meeting is how we, uh, how we started. So instead of skipping all that, I do want to do it. We have uh, Mark, who will refer to as Mr. Customer. We have Kristen, who will refer to as Mrs. Customer. Um, and I want you to do what you did in that meeting, because at that time, I was skeptical um, of of diving into that. But I learned at a later meeting that this was exactly the right thing to do. And it, it, it ended up being, uh, being something I want to, I want to do all the time. And I think you did it really well. So I propose we go into pretend mode now. It's okay. the two of us from GitLab, two people from the customer and uh, kick off the meeting like you would, uh, like you would do it there. Okay, so I've, I've, I have done, for all practical purposes, the introduction. So maybe really where we are is we're at the voice of the customer. And this was certainly an opportunity for us to get feedback. Now, at first, uh, they were, I don't want to use the term reticent, but they certainly let me, were. Let me, can, can we switch from talking about it as in the third person to just doing the actual thing? Just Yeah, you bet. You bet. You bet. Cool. So. We, 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 we went around the room and we asked various questions. What did you want to get out of? I'm sorry, am I missing something? Somebody? Let's, let's start with the introductions, Larry. You s okay. Sure. We, 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 we went around the room. We had everyone introduce no, no, no. Let, Larry, Larry, let's go into real mode. I'm Sid. I'm the CEO of, of GitLab. Larry, can you introduce yourself? Yes, hi, I'm Larry Beagle. I'm the major account executive here at GitLab. Our responsibility is to bring the right people, the right talent to support your, uh, your, 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 your objectives as it relates to this summit meeting. Mark, do you want to go? Yep, and I'm Mark, and I'll uh, represent uh, a, a bunch of groups within, within Morgan Stanley here. Uh, some of us know who GitLab is. Some of us are a little bit new, but... Uh, have heard of you, um, and we were curious about some of the differences between between you and GitHub, uh, and how you kind of play in the bigger ecosystem of, of software development as a, as a whole. Cool, Mark. What is your role at Morgan Stanley? I'm the director of uh, development for a specific group. And Thanks. what do you want to get out of this meeting, Mark? So how, how you guys are different from, from GitHub and, and how you integrate into the, the bigger ecosystem. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Now I figured out, Sid, where we're at. <laughs> uh, oh, sorry, uh, Larry. There's, there's one more person. We should Kristen, I know. Yes. Hi. Yes, I'm Kristen, and I am the VP of our technologies. And, and Sid and team, I'm here to better understand. We're looking at standardizing across our enterprise we have several different homegrown systems. Um, we have a little bit of GitHub. We have some Bitbucket. And I'm learning more about GitLab. And another reason why I'm here is, you know, we really have no way of really understanding how to manage our productivity. How do we measure that? So I'm looking to see that there's a solution that can help us with this versus having to utilize the different um, pockets of, of technology that we have. We're looking to standardize. Thank you. Thank you, Kristen. So when you talk about measuring productivity, how do you do it today? 
we really don't do a good job of it at all. And I, and I can say we do it pretty well on a team by team basis, but don't have a way to roll that up to the enterprise or have a global view of, of, uh, of our productivity or success. So out of curiosity, so what you're looking at is to try to understand the level of responsiveness of the organization is to, to uh, opportunities in the industry or ideas or, 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 or responding to change, for example, responsiveness. Is that, a, is that what you're sort of getting at? That's a fair statement. Okay. Now, one of the, one of, based upon the research that we've done over the last couple of weeks in preparing for this discussion, one of the things we've seen and, and talked to folks about is the issues around all the vulnerabilities that are going on in the marketplace, especially within financial services. How are you, how's Morgan Stanley handling this? I think it's a combination of trying to compete against our, uh, you know, old kind of legacy customers as well as new fintech startups. Uh, which there's hundreds and hundreds of them across the globe. And so we have a uh, kind of a dual threat there. So if, if, if you were to identify the top three strategic priorities that the firm is pursuing, what would they be today? Faster time to market, uh, better quality and compete better against our, our uh, traditional and new competitors. One of the things that came up during the meeting, I'm going to go out. Of, I'm going to go out of character for a moment because one of the things that came up was how do we compete and compare to Atlassian? That was right around when we were going around and doing the introduction. So I just want to bring that yeah. up. And uh, and then, uh, <clears throat> all right. At this point, Sid, I'm going to. That was those were the highlights. We got a lot of feedback. I'm going to hand it over to you to address some of the questions that came up at this point. Is that okay? Thanks, Larry. Um, yeah, thanks. Um, thanks for all that, uh, that background and insight. I want to start off by giving a brief uh, history of GitLab, where we, where we started as a company and, and how our, what our trajectory are, is so far. So GitLab started in 2011 when uh, my co-founder, Dimitri, made GitLab because he needed it himself. And he needed it because he was working in a large organization and they had the need themselves to uh, host their own uh, source code. And very quickly, it became apparent that uh, this was something that other people wanted. Over 300 people contributed to it in its first year. And um, when I saw it a year later, I started uh, GitLab.com, our uh, SaaS service. A year later, 2013, we learned something. We learned that there wasn't a lot of demand for the SaaS yet but there were all these enterprise companies running uh, GitLab already. And these are major like Fortune 10 companies that came to us with, we're running GitLab, we're happy with it, but we need more features, we need more things. And we started listening to those customers and making what they needed. Not exactly what they asked for, but something that could be used by everyone. Closely collaborating with them, uh, listening to them, bouncing ideas around and, and making what they need. And that's how GitLab became the most, uh, the, the most used in the enterprise. Right now, two thirds of all enterprises are using us, over 100,000 organizations, because we address their needs. We made the things that are important to them, all the way from how many authorization solutions we support to how many um, authentication solutions, how many um, um, uh, ways there are to, uh, to, uh, to, to do compliance with GitLab. After that, uh, 2014, we, uh, we, we incorporated. And in 2015, in uh, Y Combinator, we had our first uh, taste of what it means to be a startup in the US. Uh, we uh, flew in with uh, nine people, uh, stayed in the same house in Mountain View for three months. And we learned that we uh, were onto something, that we had a great product, that we had a lot of happy customers and that there was more for us. So then we started uh, growing to uh, address the, the market demand. Uh, we started the year at nine people, ended the year at 35 people. And last year we added over a hundred people and raised $20 million in our B round. So that was, 
a sea change. What also happened is that uh, we started going beyond just version control. Um, that's been going on basically since 2014 when we, uh, when Dimitri, my co-founder, introduced GitLab CI, and we now got a complete product, and it's an an end-to-end -end platform. It's an integrated product, so you can chat about something in GitLab. You can create an issue to track it. You can plan that issue on an issue board. You can start coding, version your code, talk about, um, talk, review your code. You can test your code. You can deploy it. For example, GitLab has something called review apps where you, for every code change that you propose, there's a working application, kind of a staging environment for code. There's, um, all kinds of deployment methods, including like manual approvals. There's an integrated container registry, but we go as far as also measuring what the effect is. So GitLab comes out of the box with uh, measurement, uh, with uh, contributor analytics and cycle analytics. So what that means is that GitLab, you can do the entire spectrum. Uh, you can, go all the way from chatting about something to getting it delivered and measuring what the impact is. And it's the, word, the world's first platform that does this. Now, th this is not a new vision to do this end-to-end, -end. Um, but I think we're the first ones pulling it off and we're pulling it off because we're the first ones that do it in an open source way. There's a huge community behind GitLab with over 1,500 people that contributed to the platform. And those have been like major contributions. For example, CERN, where the web was born, contributed SAML support to GitLab. Um, and together we can make the best solution. And together we make we, all those practices that you need in an agile uh, company, we can incorporate them into the product. So these things have, when, when you make an integrated platform, it's better overall than using separate tools. You don't have to adapt, adopt GitLab all at once. You don't have to like say, look, I'm throwing everything out. I'm just going to go pure GitLab. In fact, most of our customers, they start adopting pieces of it. And when they adopt pieces of it, they still use it with like Slack, with Jenkins, with Jira. That's fine. We have great support for those things and we integrate really well. But they find out over time that there's emergent benefits when you have an integrated solution. And I want to highlight a few of those. I talked about review apps, where every time you have a code change, you also have the application running in that state. Uh, I talked about uh, one other thing we do is contributor analytics. So for every person in the company or on your team, you can see what their activity has been uh, throughout the application, not only in the issues, but also in the code. And one really important thing is cycle analytics. What we can show with GitLab is how long it took you from first chatting about an idea to getting it out into production. You said you wanted to be a company that, is, that, that releases faster, that uh, responds faster to market needs. Well, that starts with measuring how long it takes to. And because GitLab is an integrated product, it has one data store. And it has one best path to go to there. So it's easy to measure these things. Instead of having to set up your own data warehouse to analyze these things, GitLab gives it to you. We show it to you. It's integrated as part of the product. And it's just easier to get from stage to stage because you're not, you're not having to navigate between multiple products, multiple UXs, multiple paradigms that, that are all working together in different ways. It's, the one best way where the entire community has contributed to some an integrated product. And that's why, that's why two thirds of the companies that run their own installations use GitLab. And that's why they prefer it over a siloed approach where you have a Jira, where you have a Jenkins, where you have a, a GitHub enterprise installation. And it's up to you to wire all that together. When you install GitLab, everything is wired up together for all your teams, all in the same way, so that you have one, one training. Like if you know how to use GitLab, you can use it 
anywhere in the company and you have one comprehensive set of data. How does that sound, Mrs. Customer? So, Sid, that, I mean, it sounds interesting. And Mrs. Mrs. Customer, not Mr. Customer. Yeah. Thank you. Um, actually, you know, th this does sound very interesting. I, as I mentioned, I'm looking to standardize across our organization. My concerns are that we're very slow in adopting whatever it is, agile even, you know, we're, we're going through our transformation. But you talked about analytics, which are very interesting to me. And I think having the cycle time reports will be really powerful. However, you, you also said we don't have to adopt the entire solution at once. Will I still get the analytics, the metrics for cycle time to know where our pr productivity is if I take it in chunks? For example, if I start off in certain areas and then adopt um, as we start to grow more throughout our, our enterprise? Yep, um, that's a great question. Um, the cycle analytics are um, kind of the, the, the finishing point is when you release something to production. So if you don't use GitLab to release it, uh, it's not, the metrics are not gonna, gonna fill up. Now there's a couple of ways around that. Um, we can, uh, you can have a, a fake release tab where you, where you press a button and it doesn't do anything. Um, so we could work around that. Um, it's a bit more manual work, uh, but it, you, you'll still get those metrics. Um, the other functionality, like the contributor analytics, they always work. So it doesn't matter what part of GitLab you adopt. And so another question, are you seeing um, with your, your large customers like ourselves, do they adopt um, the entire solution at once, or is it something that they gradually start to grow into? Because it sounds like you have a solution that could do a lot for us and just it feels a little too good to be true for us right now. So we'd have to kind of go through some stages, kind of crawl before we walk. Yeah, uh, well, we're getting this response a lot. This sounds too good to be true. And, and people have been sold this package before. And last time it was too good to be true, it ended up being uh, a worst of breed, something that took a lot of time to set up and something that wasn't, wasn't really good in all the different aspects. And we recognize that. Um, so we don't, we don't wanna, don't take our word for it. Take, for example, Heroku's word for it. What they saw is that people are adopting GitLab CI more than any other next generation CI solution. So the legacy CI is in Jenkins. The next generation CI solutions are commonly known as Travis CI, Circle CI, and GitLab CI. And GitLab CI just overtook the old number one, Travis CI in popularity. It's not our opinion, it's the opinion of, of, a, an, a, of Heroku, who, who have great insights into this market. So it is best of breed, and we recommend that you adopt it. However, that almost never happens. Uh, we never go in somewhere and they say, we're gonna throw everything out, we're gonna adopt you. Many times it's like, oh, but, we want to keep Jenkins for now or want to keep Jira for now. And that is totally fine. We're, we have great Jenkins support and we want to have, and we're close, according to some customers say, we're already there, but we're not happy yet. We have better Jira support than Atlassian themselves. So that's, we're not going to force you to switch anything. But what people find is as soon as they start adopting GitLab, that their developing teams are voting with their feet. They are leaving solutions like Jenkins that have been the company solution for GitLab. And there's, there's many reasons for that, but to give you a taste, with Jenkins, if you want to make a change in the configuration, you now have to go to this other tool. Maybe you don't even have permissions there. You got to ask someone else, make that change. With GitLab, your configuration for your CI project is there in the project in a way that's human readable, easily editable, and with things like auto deploy many times, you don't even have to add a configuration. So it just works a lot better. It scales a lot better. There's no, there's no anxiety anymore to upgrade um, and, and have things break on you. So we're sure that the product will con convince you and will convince your developers to, to adopt it further. Sid, can you talk a little bit about how you can partner with us to help us? Because we went down this path once before with RTC, all-in-one tool. 
It took us five years to dig out of it. And it was a terrible experience that cost way too much. Yeah, there's, there's, there's many ways that we can help. And I think Larry will probably amend my answer. But the, what we recommend is that you start using this just for a few teams, for a few projects, um, and see whether, whether it works. We think that there, there shouldn't be a big configuration effort. If you download GitLab today, 10 minutes later, you have everything you see on this slide you have it and you can use it. And we wanna help you to adopt that. And our solution architects, and it's, I'm sad that Kristen isn't here because she can sell it, say this way better than I, but our solution ar architects can, can help you figure out how to go, how to first crawl and then walk, how to first adopt, for example, the repository management and go from there to the CI, go from there to the CD, uh, go from there to uh, cycle analytics and help it get configured for your uh, for your needs Also, we're also always really willing to work with you to see is there something we should improve in GitLab for your needs? Uh, many many of our best features have come from customer needs uh, so between our support our solution architects our developers listening and actually interacting with customers and making their features and our uh, salespeople that listen to your need, we think we can help you do that. Barry, do you want to add to that? No, I'm good with the answer. Thank you. <laughs> and, and if I look at the Atlassian website, it kind of says the same thing. It's all in one platform. Can you talk about the differences? Yeah, for, I'd be glad to. So Atlassian has a suite of products. It's um, similar to GitLab, except for the feedback part. So what you don't get with Atlassian is metrics. What you don't get is contributor analytics. What you don't get is really cycle monitoring. So in our view, if you can't do continuous delivery without actually measuring what you do. It's like flying, flying blind. You, you can't have black out the cockpit and say, look, I'm flying, I'm delivering. You got to know what you're doing. You got to know what the impact is. So with GitLab, you can see exactly, I merged this and this was the impact. It, it will show you right in the code change, right in the merge request. This, this is the graph that changed the most. This new change that you made, now suddenly we're burning 300 times as much CPU. So you're informed and you can revert that. So we think that's a big difference, but the biggest difference is that it's one integrated product. With Atlassian, you can get their tools, but then it's up to you to integrate them. Actually, that's probably why they have so many resellers. They help you integrate their tools. We think that it shouldn't be something custom that works different for every team and every company. We think that as a community, we can do a much better job there. So Atlassian, when you integrate all their tools, it's days of work, maybe weeks of work if you're a larger organization. You can apply to them to get a t-shirt for your effort. We're not getting you that t-shirt. With us, it comes integrated out of the box. It always works together the same, and it doesn't break. When you upgrade, it doesn't break. When you wanna get some analytics, there's one data store to get the data from. There's, it's, it's like comparing Lotus 1, 2, 3 and DBase against Microsoft Office. One is a really integrated solution. The other thing is something where they bought a, a few companies, assembled them together, I made some basic integrations and said, hey, this works together. That, that doesn't make sense. It's, it's about the whole software delivery life cycle, software development life cycle. And it doesn't make sense to bounce around between different products. And I can, I can go on about examples. For example, our container registry, when it knows it's aware of our CI system, so it knows who you are, what authorizations you have, and you don't have to pass around all kinds of tokens and credentials. Same with chat ops, to deploy something. Our chat ops is aware of the deployment life cycle. So you can say, look, I now manually approve this uh, release, or I want to revert this and that. And it comes to back everywhere. So instead of you as a company have to figure out all the best practices, develop it yourself, it yourself. maintain it yourself, and have it di probably be different across departments, there's now, a whole community of more than 1,500 people helping you with that. 
which you can be a part of. It, it, so that kind of leads into my next question of, I mean, if, if I can replace Jira and Jenkins and GitHub, uh, how many, how, how big is your development size and, and how can you be best in each one of those categories when you're competing against whole companies? It just doesn't seem like you're that big of a, a firm. Yeah, that's correct. Well, it's correct that we're not big. And you'll see that when Larry will quote the prices for that because those reflect how efficient we are. We have about 80 developers. And they're some of the most productive people in the world. Um, we, are the, uh, we can hire the best people in the world. We're a global organization. We're in 38 countries. And um, our developers all work from a different location. So the remote only. We, allow our developers to stay focused on developing instead of all kinds of distractions. So we're shipping a lot, but I don't think that's why we're more productive. I think we're more productive because we collaborate with each other. Where GitHub hosts a lot of open source projects, we are an open source or open core project. So the difference is that with GitLab, people contribute to it. For example, our container registry. We launched an initial version but you can have one container per project. And after a few months, our, customer, our, our user said, look, I want more. And someone contributed multiple containers per project. Still working with the same advantages with the automatic authentication, et cetera. So that's the magic power of GitLab, where it's not 80 developers at GitLab. It's 1,500 people contributing more than the development capacity of any individual company. Great. Can, and can you also talk about just market share, big other large customers you have, uh, specifically financial customers? Yes, for sure. Um, I think Larry can maybe add a bit, and this is a public video, so I should be careful, but I think Nasdaq is using us. Uh, we have some of the, uh, the, the regulators in the U.S. That, that, that take care of the financial and the stock market system. They are using uh, GitLab because they too want to use best of breed. They want to use the state of art to make sure that and the, the configurations they are changing, they are on the version control. Um, and, 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 and they have the right authorizations. I, I talked about authorizations a few times, but that means simple things. It's like in GitLab, you can give someone the ability to view issues and to uh, change labels without giving them access to the source code. Those are things that, for example, in GitHub, you can do. Um, so GitLab of most large organizations are running their own installation, and there we have over two-thirds market share. So by far the majority of the market is using GitLab already. Um, you might not have heard of us because we've done a great job developing. We've not done a great job marketing ourselves. That's changing now. We're rapidly hiring more salespeople more marketing, uh, we uh, recently got a new CMO and we'll, we'll do a much better job going forward. But GitLab is already what is pervasive and the most popular. And uh, we have, um, we've got the world using us and we've got the enterprises using us. Harry, do you want to add to that? Yeah, I just wanted to make the comment that one of my larger financial services companies made, a, made an observation and shared this with me. And that is because of this architecture, they don't need additional people to, adma to administer, to manage, and secure the environment every time there's a change. And as a result of that, they look at this as an opportunity to truly reduce their total cost of ownership. And that's a, a really important element. And this is coming from a large financial services player. So I just wanted to add that. Yeah, and I think the, the secret of GitLab is you're probably already using it. We looked at, and now I'm going to give fake data because this is a public recording, but we looked at your usage and you already have 10 GitLab servers, some of them with over 100 users. Um, so you're already, as a company, using it. It's just that we've, we've never had this conversation before, but your developers are already voting with their feed and using this because it's making them more effective. It allows them to respond faster to market demands. And an example of that is git.example.com, used by over 250 people. It's been around for two years. 
and we'd love to meet the people that are, are using that and, and get them in the room. And actually at a previous conversation, uh, we had someone jump in and say, yes, I'm the, I'm the person running that. My department is using that and I really love the product. So if you can get that reaction, that's great. So this is Kristen. So question, of, I, I'm checking out your website while you were talking and I'm pretty impressed that even your free version has what it has to offer versus some of our GitHub um, installations we have here. Is this something that you would recommend us starting with or is there things in your paid version that would um, give me more at the enterprise level that I'm looking for? Yes, thanks. Um, great question. I said a couple of times, we want our users to contribute to the product and that's why everything in the software delivery cycle is available in our open source product because we don't want our AD engineers to be responsible for that. We want to work together with the rest of the community on that. And the way we, the way we make money is by having versions of GitLab that have more features and they're called uh, Enterprise Edition Starter and Enterprise Edition uh, Premium. And the difference is that Enterprise Edition Starter contains features that are better if you have more than 100 people at your organization. And Enterprise Edition Premium contains features that are really useful if you have more than 750 people at your organization. Now, you have thousands of developers, so we strongly recommend you using Enterprise Edition Premium because we think those features will make you more effective, will make the GitLab installation more effective, and will save you money. And we'd be happy to walk to an ROI calculator feature by feature to see where the benefit is. But we, if, if we think it's, uh, it's a lot of value for money. And just by, at some point, retiring the other systems, you can already save a lot of money by switching to GitLab. And that's alone from all the efficiency gains that you'll also get. Great. I don't, I don't think I have any other questions. You said before, you said. Mr. Customer, um, or I'm not sure who of you said it, but you said, this sounds too good to be true. Does it still sound too good to be true? Or are you, are you beginning to feel like there's more to this and that there's a possibility that this is actually better? What do you think, Mrs. Customer? Yeah, I mean, it, 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 everything you said really hits home where areas that we struggle with. And, you know, if we could find a, a solution that could help us in those areas, for example, better productivity and how do we measure that, um, this would absolutely help us. My concerns, again, are we, we struggle with any adoption of anything, whether it's a new process or uh, new technology. So having your organization, it's really going to be critical for us to partner with in order to adopt a solution, you know, looking to your expertise for, you know, how the, the, the metrics that we're looking at, how do we, what are we looking at? Can you compare us to others out in the industry that will be helpful for us to know? Are we in line with, or are we way off of, you know, things like that. So those are things that I think will be really helpful. And it feels like that what you're saying so far is really going to help us. I mean, I know that, you know, we haven't had these conversations with GitHub. We, you know, haven't had a conversation with Atlassian. Yes, they promote a solution, but we know that they're pieced together. So it's, you know, um, there are concerns for us around that. If one technology upgrades, you know, how do we handle that? So yes, I think you have, you know, cleared some concerns I have. It just will be a matter of how you help us with the adoption, what things that you can do to help us with the implementation training. Um, matter of fact, how do you do your trainings? You know, we have thousands of developers. You know, do you have a team of trainers that you're going to come in and do this? Or what do you guys do today? Yeah, um, great, great question. Um, thanks for that. We, we do a couple of things. Yes, we have trainers and we'd be, uh, we'd be happy to combine. We also do a lot of uh, video sessions where people throughout the company can join from whatever location they are at 
and accord those sessions so they're available for other people in the company and we'd be we'd be happy to uh to provide that um what we also do is in the product show your adoption compared to other to best in best in class best in the industry so it's called conversational development index and you can see for every part of gitlab where you are in the adoption curve how you are tracking against the leader and we, what we would love to do with you is to ter- determine a plan together determine okay what is what is our goal for every quarter what is our goal for every year and then see how we're tracking amongst that goal and if if it's not if the adoption is not going in the way we'd like we'll invest additional uh uh time together to try to see whether we can improve it with trainings with with uh communication with with documentation but maybe even changes to the product to make it fit your needs better uh but that way we have a measurable goal where we can both collaborate to to get there and last but certainly not least gitlab has always been a bottoms up thing where developers adopt it so instead of trying to push something through from the top you'll find that as soon as you give that option people will vote with their feet actually they're already doing it you're already seeing this ground up adoption and just by allowing it allowing that to happen from the top um you will see the, the adoption increase but apart from that we're really we've done this a lot of times we we are very happy to give trainings to give consulting and to uh, to add that to our partnership Great. I don't have any more questions. I see that there's 20 other people in the room apparently. Maybe they have uh, any questions. Um I've got a question um said where when you say that you can integrate to um Jira and to Jenkins um can you actually import any of the data that you that we have in those products into gitlab thanks al shiver asking a question um well there's there's a few things so the the integration is to to make gitlab work really really well with other products um so in jenkins there's a plugin and you can plug uh uh gitlab into jenkins so that jenkins detects when you have new code and it needs to run a build and then ferry that result back um with jira we our ambition is to to have better support than at last in products themselves so linking your issues uh, to your code that uh, there's already great support and it's getting a lot better and we'd love to go into our roadmap there for the rest of the year now from transferring from github there's some great support in the product there's an automatic importer and we import not just your code but also your issues your pull requests your labels your milestones your wikis so that's a completely automated program uh, process because we see so many people switching uh, it's highly advanced and you can do an uh, do a big switch and not lose any fidelity in your data every comment is still there so we that's a great experience but if you have any specific needs we'd be happy to look at that how we can uh, advice about how to do the uh, transition. Okay, thank you. If there are no other questions, um thanks. Let's snap out of it. Um I I had a quick question. I'm sorry. I was talking and I was on mute. Rep, go ahead. Uh Yes, uh can you import from both versions of GitHub, which is the the enterprise version as well as the web hosted version and how how you know what's different about those? Yes, you can. Uh, there's a lot of uh uh differences between those two products, but for the import, uh they it uses the same API, so it works in in similar fashion. Okay, thanks. Cool. Um back to you, Mark. Awesome. Thanks. Uh one other thing that uh I think might be a good um just good Q&A session if anybody has any questions to ask. 
Uh, is there any other way that you would position or add to some of Sid's comments in a sales meeting? Or are there just general questions? Um, I have some questions around uh, <clears throat> their limitations with their current tech stack. I know that the for this specific meeting, there wasn't the ability to to do a discovery call. So I'm assuming this meeting was a, a quasi you know pitch and then uh, discovery as well. Were you able to you know ascertain what limitations are they facing with their current tech stacks? Because I've, I've talked with a lot of people that are pretty locked in with certain tools, tools. and it, you know, it's going to be very difficult to replace. Um, did you get a sense of, you know, were they, were they willing to consider the entire or is it just going to be, do they have a specific interest in just the uh, SCM piece of it? So uh, what, 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 sorry, go ahead, Larry. I, I was going to, I was going to address it with a couple things that resonated from the meeting, the action items that I took out of the meeting. One is, is they, they really had a problem with, pushing out changes rapidly because of the growing vulnerabilities backlog. So they, they clearly had an issue there that they wanted to ponder. Now, did we get the, we had a very fixed window here and we were very judicious about how we handled that. So uh, that was an outstanding item that's being pursued. The issues around measuring cycle time and responsiveness and gaining visibility to their management is clearly another area where there's an, an opportunity. They, they noted, I'm not answering your question directly, but I'm just letting you know what, what resonated and what the next steps and sequence of discussion points were. Uh, the goals towards reducing the amount of products to potentially reduce complexity and, and integration efforts. Uh, that, those are the three major areas that we sort of walked out saying, let's explore this further and see where it gets us. Now I have a conversation actually tomorrow I've been traversing the organization, being referred to a couple of folks, and I've got a conversation tomorrow. So this is going to be an ongoing story. Hopefully, uh, there will be some milestones that I can, I can circle back with everyone with some revenue numbers associated with it. But we're, we're still early on, but it, nonetheless, I, I wanted to, to respond to the question that was being asked. And, and just to add to it, from one of the other meetings, uh, you know, they're, they're uh, currently standardized on JIRA, Bitbucket, and Jenkins which is probably a good number of companies in that same situation. And that's where a lot of the questions came up of, you know, how do you guys partner with us to, to do this? Can we use just the, the, the SEM piece and then, and then move into the other pieces? Um, another big conversation around at that same meeting came around, you know, can you replace Artifactory or can you integrate to it? And so uh, I think in, you know, most of our situations that it's exactly, as Sid described, right? They're gonna they're they're gonna start with one part of it and move on to the other parts of it, and, and we're seeing that more and more at every customer as they learn that we do the rest of the the life cycle. Well, cool. thanks thanks for the question, Philip, and uh, uh, very great and Mark, great answers. Um, I think that what you're seeing is that um, it's really hard to like tackle everything head on. So it's always going to be a process and tends to be that they start with the SCM and then the next thing, the, the thing that's actually hurting them is Jenkins. That's a pain. It's a pain to upgrade. So that's, that's a weakness. So they can't, they can't do it immediately, but they're okay with new projects starting on GitLab CI and then momentum builds to replace uh, Jenkins. With Jira, you're taking on the, project managers in the company are taking on, but you have to convince them. There's a lot of stuff in Jira um, and we're, we're starting to get there um, with the functionality in GitLab. I'm very excited about related issues that will ship this month. Um, but that, that's gonna be, I think a quarter or two before our, our tech is there and maybe, maybe the same kind of time before um, before the people see the advantages. What you again see, we'll see is new projects just using GitLab issues because it's lighter weight, it's easier. And then um, starting to see an interest to move and then we have to make sure that we can, uh, we can do everything that's absolutely necessary. Um, although there's, there's uh, clearly uh, people already switching from 
Jira to GitLab even even today, just because the integration makes it so much better. And uh, GitLab's already pretty complete with the uh, the milestones and the labels and everything. You, you can make everything work already. It's just uh, getting it slightly better would help. Um, and I, what Larry said about the security, I think that's a huge angle. Like every company is dealing with, look, there's vulnerabilities being found every single day. How can we protect against them? And the way you protect against them is by updating your applications quickly. So right now, how does that updating look? We make an issue in Jira. Someone submits a code to our SCM. Then we do the testing in Jenkins, and then we have some deploy tool that does the actual deployment. That just creates a lack of visibility of where something is. It creates all these steps, and it just adds time. So if you can reduce that time, you're going to be more safe. And that's where GitLab comes in, and I think that was a really powerful uh, way. We help you get your cycle time down, and getting your cycle time down means you can respond faster to potential or to vulnerabilities that are discovered. And that's the best way to stay safe. Other questions? Yeah, Mark, did the, question, did the, uh, the topic of uh, cloud hosted or SaaS come up at all? Not that I recall uh, in any of those three specific meetings. Okay. We're thinking about uh, doing a better version of this, an even better version with more scripted things and things like that. Um, but want to know if it's worth it. So if people would say, what's the top and what's the tip? So what's great about this meeting? What was great about this and what's, that's something we should improve if we do this again. For me, I think hearing the full story again is, is beneficial for everybody. I think hearing the way that you position different functionality that we have is very beneficial as well. Yeah, I thought the same thing. Um, I think it would be awesome to just, you had mentioned the process of a, you know, system with a bunch of different tools, I thought it would be pretty insightful just to ask the client, you know, what's your current process from idea to production? What's it look like? And then they can rattle off the specific tools they're using, their specific process, just like you said earlier with Jira and then Jenkins and then a deploy code tool. And then you, you can have them paint the picture and then you're able to say, okay, here's, here's how it would look with, with GitLab fully integrated. And I think it would just compare apples to apples and it would just be a no brainer at that point. But as in, in my meetings, I haven't really specifically said, okay, walk me through your um, software development life cycle and what, what's it look like? Uh, I'll ask them, you know, what tools are you using? But I don't really get them to, to verbalize the entire process. And if it's a complex one, they're going to they're gonna say it's complex, you know, over time. That's a really good idea. So basically, you can ask something like, how do you respond to a vulnerability? Walk me through when Harpleet was discovered. How did your organization respond? And they're going to be like, it was, we panicked and we created lots of issues and it took, it took us a lot of time and everyone had to scramble and be on deck. And you're like, okay, that's great. Well, guess what? With GitLab, it's going to be a lot faster because you got you get that entire process under version control, you got that entire process in one data store. It's going to be much easier to monitor how long it takes, where it's stuck, what is being done, and and you're gonna you're gonna be faster by responding to it. So that's a great that's a great question. How do you respond if a vulnerability is discovered, a big one? How do you respond as an organization and walk me to the tools that that are used to address that? And again, I think in one of those meetings, they did just that and talked a little bit about the cost savings of, of what they went to from RTC to Jira Bitbucket Jenkins. And then, you know, we kind of talked about the next evolution of that and even greater cost savings 
with all the additional functionality and metrics and measurement and monitoring that was, was on their top priority list. Yeah, and just a little color on uh, what Phil suggested, and, and I think it's fantastic. And ideally, and I, I think Mark, you said you didn't have this opportunity, but if you can uncover anything that could be tailored prior to that meeting, right? And then Sid can tell that story, but he can really hammer home or whoever's telling the story, those things that we uncovered that were unique about their process and their pains and their concerns about security. Yep, makes sense. Can I ask a quick question? Um, who was present from the customer at that meeting? When do you normally bring Sid into meetings? So there, there's kind of two variants of this meeting. One was their executive that asked us to come in and present to them our vision and our future, which is, which is a good part of this, which we could not qualify and do discovery beforehand because we just didn't have the right people and didn't know who was going to be in it. Uh, the other meeting we did have access to and, uh, and had the right people and, and had I mean, 40 or 50 different conversations to prepare and discover and qualify all these different groups and understand what they're doing. And so uh, you sit in a strategic fashion. And so we're, we're, we're going down the path of, of having Sid present to, to others. If we can do it remotely, that's ideal. As, as Sid has said before, and I'm sure other people have heard this, you know, you can do six in a day. If it's remote, it's on site. And if, if that's what we need to do, we can do that. Uh, but then you can only do one, right? So, um, but make it a bigger strategy piece of what you're, what you're doing, you know, the right and appropriate titles of people uh, to be in those meetings and, and in the right, set in the right uh, part of your sales process. And that's going to be dependent on the company as well. Some will be a, a little bit earlier, some will be a little bit later. Uh, so it just depends on. Other questions? Nope, fantastic. Sid, huge thanks for joining. I think this is super beneficial. Uh, and let me know if you can send me a, a Slack message or email or something, uh, other things uh, we can focus on in the future to have Sid join us or, or others join us. Uh, you know, things that you got out of this specifically uh, would be great. So thanks again for joining and I'll talk to you guys soon. Thanks for joining and role-playing partners. Thanks for role-playing. Thanks, Sid. Great job.